what's going on dudes and dudettes so yes that pit wide receiver jordan addison has officially entered the transfer portal i know like i know the last video there was a bunch of like stuff from the old pit head coach kind of putting out there that usc has been tampering especially the head coach lincoln riley even though you know i'm pretty sure it, he's smart enough to not have done that but he's probably also smart enough to tell Caleb Williams, his new transfer quarterback, who is friends with that player, to kind of go out there and recruit him himself instead of <clears throat> the coaches doing it so he wouldn't get in trouble. And Addison was recently seen in LA or the LA area this last weekend as well. So that kind of put up all those rumors up even higher. But overall, it's just that he entered the portal officially so teams could talk to them, but I did hear that he did also work out with the quarterback from Alabama, Bryce Young, who went to school out here in Orange County, but I don't know if that means Alabama is now in the mix. You never know, because he says, the receiver says he's transferring to be able to get better and get drafted in the NFL and not because of a name, image, and likeness deal of money that he's going to get while in college his final year. So... Should be very interesting to see this battle that's going on. USC has a lot of recruiting battles going on right now, even with Oregon as well. So very, very interesting. And then the Chargers also recently did not pick up the fifth year option on my favorite player, the defensive tackle they signed a couple years ago in the first round, Jerry Tillery's fifth year option. So it's pretty much a make or break year for him. It's pretty smart for them to see what he can actually do to maybe think about re-signing him or might be an easier now contract to trade because there's no extra year on that deal. So it's another good thing in case they want to trade him throughout the season, the season coming up. So that one, I will not be mad about that. Charters also made a little bit of news when they signed a cornerback who was an ex-Denver player recently in Bryce Callahan. Yeah, he was one of their better defensive players but for some reason they didn't re-sign him or bring him back so I'm glad the Chargers were able to scoop him up and add some more depth to their cornerback room so happy about that also USC's red shirt junior he's a defensive end slash outside linebacker Elijah Winston has entered the transfer portal he's the first USC player to do that since like December or something like that but he kind of saw the right on the wall that there were a couple other guys, including a transfer from Auburn, Romello Height, getting more reps than him and probably going to be higher on the depth chart as well. So he's going to transfer somewhere else. I mean, he's been in, at USC for four years, basically, and hasn't really progressed. I know he had injuries early in his college career, but overall, good luck to him. He's not going to make a big difference, I don't think, on a team, but we will see. So just good, good luck to him. Then, John Shire recently said in a press conference that whether Trevor Kills decides to stay in the draft still or wants to come back, they're still waiting on that decision. I think within like the next month, we might know about it because the NBA Combine will have happened by then, hopefully. So it would be a big, a big time get to re-get Trevor Kills, who was maybe the not the best freshman that there was for Duke this last season, but, you know, to come back, make the game better, probably make a little bit of money off on the side as well at while you're at Duke instead of just going to the NBA, getting on a crappy team and not having a good a, a good uh, contract. So, yes, yeah, hoping that he does return because they should help out Duke because they are kind of thin at that shooting guard position. So it should be very interesting in, in the near future. And a couple more USC guys signed offensive lineman Liam Jimmins. It's kind of weird. He got invited to both, I believe, the Buffalo Bills and Baltimore Ravens uh, rookie minicamp. So I don't know if you can go to both or if he's going to choose between one or the other. So at least he's getting some recognition there. And then Jalen McKenzie, who is actually supposed to be the best offensive lineman that USC let go of for some reason. He didn't get drafted, but he did earn a undrafted free agent deal with the Tennessee Titans so see if he makes that team but once again a couple of these guys that I thought USC USC should have uh, 
come back or return to school to get better. Probably would have been drafted later, but to go undrafted for a lot of these USC guys, it wasn't surprising because they all should have came back, especially a lot of those defensive players, but you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Then when it comes to Luka, yeah, Luka Doncic, one of my more favorite players in the NBA, other than someone that's not on the Lakers. Uh, he went off in game two against the Phoenix Suns, or was it? No, no, it's game one, sorry. He went off, he had uh, 45 points, 12 rebounds and eight assists. Sadly, it wasn't a loss. I just think his team is probably another player away from becoming really good, which they might make this off season. It just sucks that he's gonna have a really good series and most likely end up losing to Phoenix early. And then, you know, both on the other side, Golden State and Memphis are gonna go to a seven game series because that series was just tied up last night and they were, they've they been going back and forth the first two games and they're just gonna beat each other up. Phoenix is going to sweep up and most likely get to the finals again, which sucks because they are a division opponent of the Lakers. But overall, I mean, I'm at least liking the playoffs, the playoff play, but it is kind of annoying that both Boston and Phoenix are doing good in these playoffs. Then an ex-USC punter who graduated recently, Ben Griffiths, he was actually selected in the Canadian Football League draft that happened last week and was picked uh, number nine overall. So that's pretty cool for him in the first round. So obviously a team liked him that much, or maybe they are a playoff team. So good luck to him, very interesting. Then some miscellaneous news, yes. Apparently, I didn't know, but maybe James Corden of the Late Late Show, the English guy, uh, he apparently his contract might be coming up soon. I don't know if this is a ploy to maybe get a new contract, but he might not be re returning next year. And apparently that's a one person that is part of my world on the short list, according to some news thing. It's from Instagram, so it might not be true, but it'd be cool if it is true, is the bassist of Blink-182, Mark Hoppus. Now, people who don't know, he did have a show on Fuse. Fuse is like a music channel, wannabe, like a VH1 or MTV that actually did show music at the time, like music videos and stuff, but it kind of isn't really doing much, but they did give him like a hour to half hour type of show where he asked questions to different band members and people that he knew. And it was kind of like a, a thing too that he also did like jokes as well. So that'd be pretty cool to see him on a late night talk show like that, and especially if it's a late, late one, it's not the most important late night show for these networks, but that'd be pretty cool. Thought that was a bit of interesting news. And then apparently, according to Paramount Plus, they're working on a new series that involves the Jackass crew. Now I know Johnny Knoxville has recently said in interviews while promoting the movie that he's pretty much done. That's why they kind of added a main group of like three or four new Jackass people to be able to do a lot of these other stunts and he just had one of his worst stunts in there in the jackass forever that i did see where he got pretty messed up knocked out for a while and could have been really bad and he said he's done even worse things and still didn't get hurt as much as he did in that stunt so he's looking to maybe cut the reins back maybe show up here and there but it's kind of interesting that they're bringing the show back it will be weird that it's on like a, you have to pay it now basically for to see it at paramount plus but overall we'll see what they could do if they add more people or bring in more celebrities like they kind of did this last time even though the celebrities didn't really uh do many of the stunts but i don't think legally you could probably get that or insurance wise to cover a, a famous person if they get injured so we'll see there are a lot of crazy famous people out there but uh, they also did say that the 4.5, a lot of these Jackass movies have like a 0.5 version, which is like a number two of it, but they just add more stunts that were deleted or taken out of the movie. So that will be actually on Netflix in a couple weeks, like May 20th or something like that. So that'll be interesting to see what else they had on the cutting room floor. Be pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Then Phil Jackson, yes, apparently he's making news with the Lakers that 
He apparently is helping them advise about how to get their next head coach and who they should look at and maybe talking with some of those head coaching candidates as well, which is kind of interesting because he can maybe help out a little bit more with Nick Nurse and Darvin Ham, a couple ex assistant coaches of his and, or maybe people he's worked with. But overall, it does seem uh, pretty sketchy just because I know LeBron really hates him because that's the main reason why he never went to New York when he was a free agent to the Knicks when Phil Jackson was a GM because kind of said something about LeBron James and his posse with all his group of black friends basically which is kind of dumb of Phil Jackson but overall it is kind of sketchy that they are doing that the Lakers organization is letting him help out unless they might be maybe looking to trade LeBron I know that kind of was put out there by a lot of people that they should look into trading him a lot more recently and then this news of Phil Jackson coming in to help out kind of pushes that kind of ignites a little bit more fire to it especially because LeBron hasn't been saying much of anything and then also you can't really discuss a new extension with LeBron because it's called tampering and the Lakers need to make moves before they can extend him and how they make those moves if you don't know if he's officially going to Resign or stay with the team or not so it is a whole bunch of a big mess and even the mentioning too that including AD if you wanted to trade him because of his past injuries it would be hard to his trade value is not as high as it once was especially what the, so pretty much the Lakers aren't going to get back what they did like three or four first round picks a couple of good solid players they might get a player or two maybe a pick or two which to me isn't that bad <clears throat> I don't mind blowing this up and restarting and maybe to push to get someone like I mean obviously people put these fan edits of like say Luka Doncic or uh, Zion Williamson in <laughs> Lakers jerseys which is awesome to see but I doubt that would happen even someone recently did a John Morant who's been playing very well for Memphis in a Lakers jersey but I don't see that happening either because they're decades younger than LeBron and or even AD they're at least a bit younger and less injury history and I don't think they would do that either so overall it's a very sticky and messy situation for the Lakers we'll see what comes out of it hopefully something positive but you never know it is LA so yes thanks for watching people like subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think have a great rest of your day and yes May the fall be with you.